page Memtes. And um, we will have to start a little bit on the repair repetition side and then continue. Um, we will start from the line that begins in the word Bibriyas Ho'elam, a Rashatevis Bibriyas Ho'elam. We are now in, into. Yuna? There's one with your marks. You want this one? Thanks. We are now into focusing in and understanding, pointing out what is the union of, of our Rosim Pnevi Yatsmi, as represented by Neshomis and Torah. In contrast to Rosim Chitsoini, that is represented by the world, the creation of the world. As great as the world is, this is called the Rotsen Chitsoini. This is not a Rotsen that came to be initiated itself. There was something else that initiated this Rotsen. And this is why it says, Breshis, that the creation of Breshis was Bishvil because of two, two, two enticing elements, Yisroel and Torah. But Neshomish Yisroel and Torah, since that they are the, in, they are the initiator, there, there is the initial impetus for the whole creation, that means that they have an essential and inherent presence <coughs> in the locus. And represent it in the creation as the essence. Okmaimer, okay, this is what we call Okmaimer. And as 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 Chazal say, the min yimlach benishmiseim shel tzaddik. Who did Hashem consult? This is the expression. Who did Hashem consult in creation? Benishmiseim shel tzaddik. This consultation. This is an internal consultation, internal to, to a locus. In other words, why, why, why create? And the answer was, that is a, um, that this is the impetus to create, and because in the creation will be revealed the, the essence of a locus. Which means to say the hachlot as horot and all his havus <coughs> that the decision for the will of his ha- on his havus the, the will to create what ultimately was machit concluded the rots that it should actually be um, finalized. For his habits, who alidei neshome and neshome is atzadik. It is through the presence of neshome is atzadik. Vehainu, which means to say clearly, shehein hein hakavon apnimis, that they are that which is called kavon apnimis, the internal intent in the whole, in the whole creation, and they, thus they are. They are the essence of the of the creation. The Hainu, <coughs> which actually means, we'll try to identify the various Bahainus. Shehein Hein Hakabona Pnimis. That they are in fact the Kavona Pnimi is the internal, the deeper intent in the creation. <coughs> um, in, I'm, I'm just to give a, a, a general overview of this Vahainu, Vahainu, Vahainu. And the point is, as we spoke many times, that the initial impetus, arousal, that which initiates 
anything. Seems that this is the initiator out of nowhere, without any uh, anything else initiating it. That means that this is the, this is an essential reality within Elokos and Lahavu. By, by human being also there is that which entices him initially because in the human being also there is there is a certain element of, of truth of emes and they say in the Shomaj soil are really emes and therefore there is an initial enticement now it's important to understand that that which is in the initial enticement is not merely a kickoff and then it runs on its own like we say in our world. In our world, if you kick something, if you throw something, it flies on its own by, by inertia. And this explains that this is mis- a misunderstanding. It is not correct to, to see it this way. This way. You know, physically, this is the way it appears. That you throw a ball, for example, and it flies on its own, on its own presence of flying. It, it, it continues to fly by inertia. So Chitz explains that that's not the, right, the correct way to look at it. The correct way to look at it is that this force that initiated this flight, that threw it up, carries, continue, carry, continues to carry the ball to its destination. There's much to speak about it. I just want to show the contrast between the way see this way, we view this, these things and, and the way it appears to be in the world. That's why the world is chitzonius and this is pneumius. And in chitzonius everything becomes a separate entity. Something kicks it off and then it goes, it has, it has no me, it has no interest to fulfilling any kind of purpose. I'm here, so I'm here. You threw it, so I'm flying. But in the overall scheme of things, in the greater reality, everything has <coughs> an, <coughs> a meaning and an intent, and therefore that which continues to, to act in a certain way, in a certain direction, is, is actually activated, continue to be activated and maintained by the initial force that, that initiated. Without going into, into, you know, the entire view of this thing, but this is the Nakuda for, uh, for this moment, and therefore, the hachlota, the initial force that that final finalized the decision to create the world, that is the impetus for the creation world, and that remains the primius of the world. That remains the 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 in the, the the highest in 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 um, <coughs> internal force that maintains the world. The world does not exist on its own because it was created at some point in time. It doesn't exist by inertia. There is something that maintains its and continues to give it life, and that is the which started that which started it initially. This is the, the essence, this is the pneumia, this is what the Rebbe says. They are the Kabon pneumis, they are the, that force that maintains the world and, um, and existence. And we have explained this on a human level, which is uh, something which we more closely can relate to than <coughs> the, the flight of a ball. Uh, <coughs> um, a human being decides to do something. There's an initial decision. And then he starts off and doing all kinds of different things that may distract him, that may take him into all kinds of different directions, all kinds of different ways. The initial force that started off this whole path maintains that continued activities. No matter how convoluted they become, no matter how difficult it is to trace it back to the initial, to the initial force that started it. 
but that isn't exactly what what's happened. Hare. <coughs> okay, so we underline the cool new idea. Hare, thus we see, since that the Nishomis, they are that initial kavon, that initially put the whole creation in, in, in so to speak, on track. Hare, therefore we see the Nishomis, hey, mibkinas, pnimis, and soibon. That the Nishomis are of that element that's called pnimis, and soibon. The Pnimi is in self, this is what initial this is where the creation comes from. But in Pnimi is itself, there has to be something that have that has forced the issue, forced forced it out, and that's in Shomish Israel. Velochai. Okay. Hey, what the yeah. So what's the emphasis on the the fact that the initiator has to be present in, every, in the ongoing what, how are we relating that to Neshem Yisrael just saying that Neshem Yisrael are constant um, existence well, let's finish one more line <coughs> They are the aspect of Pnimis and Seif. Pnimis and Seif means, as we already discussed, you know, when we were here, here a few days ago, not on a functional level element, but of the essence of Ein Seif itself. Again, these are the concepts that in our terminology would seem to be contradictory. If Ein Soif is an essence, why does it have anything? Why does he want anything? <coughs> shouldn't want anything. He doesn't, and you attack it from biological, he shouldn't want anything. He is completely self contained, perfect, like a Havdla Rak. Does a rock mean anything? So we explain that 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 an essence that has no want is is nothing at all. The want is not representing a lack. Something I fulfilled. No, this is what it is. It, this is, uh, it's it's an initial message. What is my present mean? Something has no meaning. It's not. An, it's nothing. Show me some of my pnimi. is saying so. The, the, the ain't soif is a reality. And so many the soil are, con- are contained within that reality. I, I don't want to say this, but they, it would it would be uh, not untrue to say that the many soil is a testimony to the fact that ain't soif is a reality. There is something real there. That's that's already uh, taking it. I uh, attempt to understand it, but there's no way to understand. It. There's no way to understand it because understanding is only we can only understand functions. We cannot understand essence. Period. So to grasp and understand it is impossible, but to understand that without a fun, without a purpose. It is me. It is not an essence that we can understand. Like we say all the time, 
the sun is s is an etzim bihiri. That's why Chassidus expresses it. Etzim bihiri, an essence, a bright essence. And where does that manifest itself? That wherever the sun is, it brightens up, not by function, not by action, but by its presence, everything automatically becomes bright. Like the Pershing says, Memshel is by Yem, it rules the day, and essence rules. Like a Melech. In the presence of a Melech, he automatically rules, without saying anything. The Havdal, Napoleon, who has who had this this uh, even though he was not officially a king but he had this this stance of uh, of royalty when he ruled he was he was a general but he ruled by by, by presence so I once uh, saw a, a description there was a, a a huge meeting among all the, the big generals and so forth and they were holding by Napoleon steps in Napoleon was a shorty was a five foot five was a shorty he steps in. And there's a total hush. He's there. <laughs> the Maisa meet the Meshe Velenkin. The Meshe Velenkin was sent by the Alter Rebbe to, to be inside the, the German, uh, the, the French um, uh, um, general, in, in general's meetings, he befriended everybody, and he was still a common, a common presence. And he, as I thought, he knew what, what the plans were, everything was going on, like a, an internal spy. And he, he was there, and he befriended everybody. He was a very intelligent man. He was standing among all the generals in the discussion. Napoleon walks in, and uh, Napoleon notices him without saying a word. Who is this? And he goes in the trust and touches his heart. You know the story, right? <laughs> and this was his way to verify is he for real for real or is he a really a stranger? So Major Lincoln then said that that which had never taught us mind over matter, that the boy of Shalt and Halev served saved his life at that moment. So that is, so to speak, a, a motion, an essential presence. <coughs> the Shomis Israel represent that essential presence. Pnimius in self. Pnimius in self, the Pnimius of in self. Not the Chitzenia, Chitzenia, Chitzenia itself is the Insoi, is its, is, its, is its limitless spread and expression and, and, and effect. Pneumis Insoi is, why does it have this etern, this uh, uh, limitlessness? Not its spread, like we said, when the sun, the Etz and Behiri is not the fact that it spreads light in their flow. Its presence is automatically everywhere. It's an etz. It's an etz. And thus, the Nishomis came, were created, in a state, in an aspect. That's called Mahus or Mitzias Dovo. A real presence, not a functional presence, but an entity unto itself, a real entity. Which means Mahus or Mitzias Dovo. We discussed the word Mahus, as I recall, in the last time. The Hainu, 
which means to say, Shehein inyan atzmi loirag haor leval. That the neshamas are an inyan atzmi are an essential inyan. This which the neshamas elude, they give out certain seichel and certain qualities. That's 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 an, a, a a result, a functional element for the neshamas. That's not what the Neshama is. The Neshama is a yin and atzmi. A truth unto itself. Loi rag haor alavad. Not merely, not only haor. Haor could be, could be great. But it's only haor. Meaning, it is still definable by its effect. <coughs> the shamas are not definable by the by the effect. And the shamas could be totally <coughs> oblivious, um, in obtrusive, in obtrusive, and they're still there. They don't disappear. And the proof for that is <coughs> where we see that the Nishomes are capable of accepting revelations of Oiros Pnimi Vyatsmi, revelations of Oiros, revelations that that elude Pnimi Pnimi Vyatsmi, essential truth, truths. Truths that are not definable on a functional level, Venim is batelus bose, and it does not lose itself. And as a matter of 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 illustrating it, and nearly on a much lower level, but still the principle is being illustrated, like you said before. Napoleon walked in. This is like a melech. And everybody is hushed. But they didn't crumble, they didn't fall off their feet. They remained standing. Because in the in Apesha Om Hodam there is there is an essential reality, essential truth. And they continue to talk um, and, and intelligently. They continue to function as human beings. If a king consults his ministers, and they are standing there, total beetle, and they are unable to say it, to say anything, they have nothing to say because they are completely bottled. That's not that's not a minister. A minister has to be bottled through and through to the mouth, but he is an essential truth. He is as involved in in the king's country as the king himself. He censored the reality of the country in in his bones, and therefore he's able to stand up and, and give his advice. So at the same time he is he said through and through nullified to the king yet an essential things. Right. All of his all of his gilluim are nullified, but the essence is there. And at that moment, every question that the king asks addresses itself directly to his core. All the gilluim are nullified, yet he can speak. Yes, he can speak. Because it comes directly from the course. The, the fact that a human being can speak is 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 is, a, is, a, is an essential description of a human being. This is not just functional. Thing. When you, on Tuesday, when you explained the um, the Yuluy and Pinimi explaining Shimon Esrei, right? What was the 
the main points you wanted to get across by that. You explained <coughs> the law on the, in the, in the inside. Shemaino <coughs> essay is an illustration of this principle. You stand there without, without a movement. What you say is almost inadvertent. No, you stand there. What is, what are you, what are you experiencing? What are you recognizing about? It? Recognizing, like we always say, what's chokhmah? The knowledge that there is a truth. What are you recognizing? The, the, the presence of the truth, and that's what you are adre- a, a, a facing right now. And you're still able to speak. It was no, you're not able to speak. You're whispering. So what? Okay, so I. I okay, you're speaking. There, you're speaking from. Like we said, what is the, what are the feelers? What are the, bakoshes of Shmuel Nesra? Not bakoshes from a, an external perspective. Listen, I may be hungry after davening. Make sure my breakfast is ready. That is not, what is what is addressing Shmuel Nesra. Addressing Shmuel Nesra is that this essence that I'm recognizing now, that should follow me through, throughout. So was that a mushroom, was that illustrating the Eno Mizbatelis Bizer, or just the Indian of, um... No, that is a mushroom for Eno Mizbatelis Bizer. Paramai found that the Lord Shantuf said, that when I, when I dab, and I come out alive after dabbing, that's, uh, that's a demonstration of tears on us. Mm-hmm. There is nothing interfering. There is no self. There is no worldly conscience. And I'm still alive. Things like this. Just to add something to what we did, what we discussed already at this moment, which is the like the end of this year. Well, I was away, we have discussed various things, and I pointed out this point with, with a, from a different angle. Thinking of the Holocaust, thinking of the Holocaust survivors. When they were freed from those camps, there was no human being, there was nothing. There was nothing there. Picture to yourself for a moment, I, I, it's impossible. I mean, you, you just break down a man or a family, a wife and children. But this was he alone. You know, in his whole, his whole, his whole life. In front of his eyes, they were all slaughtered, and he was forced to witness all that. And then he survives, and in labor camps, right now. And it comes out completely emaciated, physically and spiritually. But in a relatively short short time, he starts building a new family. Where does that come from? Where does that come from? From culture? From his environment? <laughs> There's nothing left. That's an essence. <clears throat> this point that you made earlier about the initiator being carried throughout the whole creation I understand that but how does it what's the point here how it relates to in other words what were you trying to bring out related to <coughs> my mind this Indian being meaningless this Messiah is also indicated itself what is the primitive the primitive the primitive the primitive the primitive does that mean that they started off or that that is that what Biyazo Elam represents? So con- they're constantly representing, representing the Yemiya uh, that's, what, that's what maintains Biyazo Elam. This is what the, the world is. Mm. That's why there is Shabbat, there is Mitzvah, there is Ayurveda, because mm. of Shabbat, Bereshit, mm. Bereshit, Bereshit. The Torah begins with Bereshit, with Bereshit, Bereshit. What well, does that have to do with Torah? Why they created the world?
All right, gentlemen, this is it for this morning. I, as I said, I listened a little bit, didn't have a chance to listen. No other interruption, but for Hashem. That's why I read you. Yeah. You're a spy, you kept calling on. There's something good going on, no question about it. Have a great day.